Hey friends, it's story time. This story is called The Princess and the Pea, retold by John Ketch and illustrated by Bernard Oberdick. The Princess and the Pea. A long time ago, there lived a prince who was looking for someone very special to marry, but that someone had to be a real princess. The prince met lots of young ladies who wanted to marry him. Some of them were very pretty, some of them were very rich, and some of them were very smart, but none of them was a real princess. And so he kept looking and hoping and yearning. The prince wore out his shoes, dancing with all the eligible young ladies. He wore himself out, going to parties with them, and he talked with them until he was so tired that he couldn't talk anymore, but still he couldn't find a real princess. Perhaps, said the king, there are no more real princesses. Maybe, said the queen, all the real princesses have already found their princes. Besides, dear son. You know you are very, very picky. And so it went, more parties and dances and conversations for another year, until one night, in the middle of a ferocious thunderstorm, there was a knock at the door of the castle. The king was up late. The thunder had awakened him, you see. And so he went to the door. Outside stood a young woman. She was soaking wet. Please give me shelter, she implored. The worried king asked how she came to be alone in the night. My family and I were traveling through the forest. It was so dark and stormy that we lost each other. I walked until I saw the light in the castle. By now, the queen, too, had awakened. She took the young woman with her to a guest room to give her dry clothing and to settle her in for the night. Who is your family? asked the queen. I am a king's daughter, though you wouldn't know it to look at me, the young woman said. Indeed, her clothes were torn and muddy, and her face was weary from traveling. Hmm, thought the queen. We'll soon see if she is a real princess. Real princesses are very, very sensitive. And so the queen called the maids and the footmen and ordered them to bring twenty mattresses and twenty feather comforters to the bedroom. Just stack them up high, she told them. We want our guests to be comfortable after her ordeal. While a warm bath was being prepared, the servants piled up mattresses and feather comforters until they nearly reached the ceiling. Then they set a, la a ladder next to the bed so their guests could climb up. After the servants left, the queen took one small green pea that she had gotten from the kitchen and tucked it as far under the bottom of the mattress as her arms could reach. When the young visitor was ready for bed, the queen helped her climb up the ladder to the top of the stack of mattresses and comforters, blew out the candle, and wished her a good night and pleasant dreams. In the morning, when the young woman awoke and joined the royal family for breakfast, the queen asked her how she had slept. Oh, I barely slept a wink last night, she replied. I must have strained my back in the forest because it felt like I was sleeping on a stone and not on the stack of mattresses and feather comforters that you prepared for me. The queen knew at once that this must be a real princess. She wanted to tell her son about her test, but she could not get his attention. He was gazing lovingly into the eyes of the princess and she into his, and they were both smiling. After breakfast, the king showed the princess around the castle while his men searched the forest for her family to bring them safely to the shelter of the palace. When the queen was finally alone with the prince, she said to him, I think she's the one, son. Then she told him about placing the pea under the stack of their guest's mattresses. Only a real princess would have felt the pea in that bed, she said. Thank you, mother, said the prince, but I didn't need a pea to tell me she's a real princess. I could see it in the gentleness of her eyes, hear it in the softness of her voice, and feel it in the kindness of her heart. 
and so the prince and the princess were married. Now, you might be asking, whatever became of the pea? Well, some say the pea was put into a museum. Others say the pea was cooked in the, in the prince and princess's wedding soup. But still, others say that the queen kept it to remind herself of her son's wisdom in recognizing his real princess. The end.